Good morning. Welcome to Take Me Out to the Ball Game. We get you caught up in the world of sports, news and headlines in just a flash. All right, we're going to go ahead and get into the the medals. And I'll tell you what, I watched the gold medal game between the United States and Iran for freestyle wrestling. David Taylor of the United States has a takedown with about maybe 30 seconds left. He was trailing three to two. And for people who are not familiar with the scoring system, long story short, he was down three to two. He made a move that instantly gave him a four to three lead and was be able to, was able to hold on for the last 30 seconds for Olympic gold. An incredible story. The guy that he beat is known as the great one in Iran. He has won the world championship several times. He won the, uh, the gold medal the last time in the Olympics. And what an incredible story. Congratulations, Mr. Taylor. And a uh, good feeling this morning when you watch the Olympics and you see someone, one of your countrymen doing something like that. It's just, it, it really is inspiring. And uh, I was, uh, I was actually jumping for joy uh, in my garage w- when this happened. I'm sure the neighbor's like, what in the hell is that guy getting all excited about at 730 in the morning? But there, but there you have it. Um, metal update. The United States now leads 86 to 73 in the medals. United States with 27 gold. They're inching a little closer. They are six behind China now. So uh, we'll see if they can catch them in the golds. But right now they have a commanding 86 to 73 lead in the overall medals. And the U.S. men have moved on to the gold medal round for the gold medal game for the United States men's basketball. And the women's soccer team did win the bronze. It was disappointing, but, but they did end up winning the bronze. So that was a big deal. Uh, other, other news from, from around uh, the Olympics. Uh, unfortunately, the, the U.S. men's track and field, they failed to advance in the 4 by 100 finals. And so that is devastating. Usually the United States is very good, and uh, we'll get into that in this state in history here in just a moment. Okay. Other big news from around the world of sports that you might have missed when you were snoozing and the rest of the sports world was uh, up and at them. Max Scherzer wins his Dodger debut, strikes out 10 Astros, and the Dodgers split the series with the Astros. They win last night. So that, so that obviously a really big deal for Dodger fans because they finally get to celebrate against the, the Astros in the, from the Chiefs game because the night before they were blanked. So seven to five winner for the Dodgers. Other teams that won last night, if you didn't hear your team, they didn't win. Cubs win. Giants won. Royals, Angels, Mets, Yankees, Blue Jays, Red Sox, Phillies, A's, Brewers, the Atlanta Braves, Twins lose to the Reds, and the Mariners lose to the Rays. So there you have, have that in the world of baseball. Uh, quick note, Atlanta winning last night was the first time since the All-Star break that the Atlanta Braves have won consecutive games. They also have not lost consecutive games since the All-Star break. So a really weird stat since the All-Star break, which when they came back, I believe was July 14th or July 15th. They have, they have come out the gate, win-loss, 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 win-loss until yesterday. So that is a weird stat, and they will obviously have to play better baseball than that if they are going to catch the Mets, who have a two-and-a-half game lead on Atlanta and a one-and-a-half lead on the Philadelphia Phillies. But by the way, those two are at it uh, Friday. Phillies and Phillies and Mets 
that game, that series is in uh, Philadelphia. They are at it. Now, games today of note, Phillies are at the Nats to finish their series. It's Ross versus Nola. Nats trying not to get swept. Uh, Braves are back in St. Louis. Tukey Toussaint versus LeBlanc. Tukey has looked good the first couple of outings. Last time he got bombed. And then the Mets and Marlins, they go back at it this morning. Uh, well, 12, 10 Eastern lunchtime, Rich Hill and Garrett is going to take them out for the Marlins because Rogers had a family medical emergency. Obviously that is his business, not ours, what it is. And he will not make the start. Okay. Other, other early games that you might want to make, pay attention to uh, Red Sox are at the Tigers and the Giants are at the D backs at three forty Eastern. And then all the other games are tonight. A pretty decent slate for a Thursday. The other big thing that happens tonight, for the first time since the Super Bowl, the National Football League is back in action, baby. And we've got the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers going head to head in the Hall of Fame game. It is a we we all know it's a it's an exhibition game, but it is football and people will be glued to their television sets they always are now you're usually bored after about a quarter but it's fun to watch football back at it again uh don't believe that we're going to see Dak prescott uh he's we, you know with the shoulder strain and everything i think they're going to take it easy they'll they'll get to play an extra preseason game so you may see prescott next week but i don't think you're going to see prescott until the second to last week of the of the uh, preseason best case scenario you may not see him at all the the hall of fame speaking of that the enshrinement is this saturday at 6 30 eastern tom brady and bruce arians are both going to attend the pro football hall of fame enshrinement in canton as uh Pey as peyton manning is getting inducted and i think that's a pretty cool uh, move by Peyton Manning. I'm sorry, by uh, Tom Brady to everybody knows that there was a rivalry there on the field and he's going to be there for the enshrinement. Th those two will ever will forever be linked. Now, obviously, Brady ends up having a much. I don't want to say more successful career because Peyton Manning's one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, but no one's ever going to be better than Tom Brady, at least not in our lifetime. It's just it's not going to happen. You're going to have to like Pat Mahomes is going to go out is going to have to go out there and he's going to have to go like Patrick Mahomes is going to have to win like 10 Super Bowls to ever eclipse Tom Brady. And normally in the National Football League, the way it's set up with salary caps, that's just impossible. So there you have that. Uh, the enshrinement itself, if, if you're wondering, like, you know, who's going to be in the enshrinement. I do have the list real quick, just a reminder, because you know, this news breaks around January, then no one talks about it. And so you're like, who the hell's playing? Are you, or who's getting inducted? So uh, Alan Fanica, who, who was a guard for the Steelers, and of course the Jets and Cardinals. Uh, Tom Flores, long overdue, one of the greatest head football coaches in the beginning of the Super Bowl era. So we're talking about the 70s into the early 80s. He obviously was more known for his coaching with the Raiders from 79 to 87 than he was the Seahawks from 92 to 94. But I think, I think what I will remember him most for is his second Super Bowl championship with the Raiders and the Redskins where they just route a really good Redskins team that was going for back-to-back -back Super Bowl titles. Calvin Johnson. There's been arguments on whether or not he should be in the Hall of Fame this quickly. Uh, nine seasons, only played 135 games. He was spectacular during it. So have your arguments as you will, but uh, he is going into the Hall of Fame, ex-Georgia Tech star and Detroit Lion. Uh, John Lynch, the safety from the Bucks championship team, he's going in. Peyton Manning, we just talked about him, University of Tennessee, and then, of course, most famously known as a Colt, but then also won, it, won, won his uh, second championship when, when he was with Denver. So Bill Nunn, Bill Nunn, senior scout, player personnel, 
he is going in and he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers from 1968 to 2014. And then Drew Pearson, this is another one where people are arguing whether or not he was great enough to be in. If you're going to put Calvin Johnson in, you got to put Drew Pearson in. And I get that Calvin Johnson's numbers are more impressive over the time line, but Drew Pearson played in an era where we're, we're throwing the forward pass was not as easy as it is today. Defenses were allowed to just grab onto you. And so Drew Pearson well-deserved overdue Dallas Cowboy from 73 to 83. And then Charles Woodson, it's, it seems like Charles Woodson and Peyton Manning will always be connected at the hip. Charles Woodson goes in as well this year. Okay, let's going to go ahead and uh, on this date in history, and this is a pretty good one today because I thought this was, this was very uh, – Fitting considering the fact that we are sitting right in the middle of the Olympics. And on this date in history, Jesse Owens, which I think everybody has heard of. If you have not heard of him, I would be shocked. Even our youngest contributor on the armchair quarterbacks of 18 years old had heard of Jesse Owens because I was curious the other day. So, Jesse Owens, I think we all grew up knowing that he was one of the greatest Olympic athletes of all time. He also one of the greatest Americans of all time because of what he had to endure over in Berlin in the 1936 Berlin Olympics. Now, on this date, 1936, he won his third gold medal. That would be the third of four altogether. But I think what gets forgotten about is that Jesse Owens, who was born in Oakville, Alabama, goes to Ohio State University. And it is known as the greatest day of all time in the history of men's track and field in the United States. He broke five world records. This was in Ann Arbor, Michigan. At the at the college Big Ten championships. He broke five world records in 45 minutes and tied a sixth. All in 45 minutes. I don't remember hearing that story as a kid. Now, maybe you have, but I, I don't remember. Hearing, I always heard about the Olympics and what he did. But five world records set in different track and field events in 45 minutes and tied a sixth. So essentially six world records in 45 minutes. That's unheard of. That'll never happen again. Because first of all, they don't, they, they don't do these. They don't do any of these championships that closely together. He also, for people who have forgotten what he did in the Olympics. He was the first to win four gold medals in an Olympic game. That record stood for track and field until 1984, almost 50 years later when the great Carl Lewis did it. He, he did four gold medals in seven days. He won the 100 meter, the 200 meter, the long jump and the four by 100. This would eventually get evened or equaled, excuse me, by Mr. Carl Lewis. But Jesse Owens, four golds in one summer Olympiad. He had a world record in the four by 100 relay with his team that, that, that it stood for 20 years. And something else of note. Now, we all know the famous deal where Adolf Hitler would not shake his hand. He wouldn't shake anyone's hand. There wasn't a German competitor. So the Olympic commissioner at the time said, you either shake all of their hands or you don't shake any of them. And so he was asked, he, he was asked to leave his own Olympics in Germany. You tell me that didn't grind his gears later. But anyways, 
Adolf Dassler. Very popular name in Germany at the time, evidently. You don't run into a lot of Adolfs anymore. I wonder why. But Adolf Dassler convinces Jesse Owens to wear his shoes. This would be the first time that an African-American would be an endorsement, an endorser of shoes or any other sort in American sports history. Now, who was Adolf Dassler? He later on was the founder of the Adidas Shoe Company. And a side note, his brother Rudolph, he created Puma. So there you have that. That's the, that's the history of that on this date in history. Uh, Jesse Owens, would, uh, who was born in 1913, lived... 66 years uh passed away in 1980 so uh never forget your history my friends and jesse owens is one of the greatest american heroes that you will ever read about that is actually true when you read this you think it's like paul bunyan like there's no way this really happened unbelievable story we will see you tomorrow for take me out to the ball game today and uh, I, for one, am going to be uh, diving into the Olympics. I'll watch a little football, but the Olympics are coming to the end. And what I saw this morning by Taylor winning the gold in the free wrestling, that rejuvenates me. When I see stuff like that, it rejuvenates me in the purity and the goodness of sport. We'll see you. Take me out to the ball game.